Hi, I'm Weston. I love talking about the Jets. And I'm here to talk about week six, where the Jets win 27 to 10 over the Green Bay Packers. <sighs> Y'all, I used to pray for times like these. The Jets defense is smothering now that they've gotten it going. I mean, this was a defensive domination by the Jets on every facet of it. The defensive line harassed Aaron Rodgers all day long. The safeties looked good. Sauce Gardner, I thought, had his best game of the season. He was amazing today. He had, I think he only got credited for two, but by gosh, I, I know for a fact he had his hands and knocked away like three or four balls. He looked amazing. If last week was his coming out game, this was the after party. Sauce Gardner looked absolutely phenomenal today. And on the defensive line, ugh. John Franklin Myers looked fantastic. Quinnen Williams had his best game as a Jet today. Pair of sacks, blocked field goal, three quarterback hits, a pair of tackles for loss. He was outstanding this afternoon. He looked amazing. Uh, Michael Clemens also had a really, really great game. Blocked a punt. Will Parks would pick that up and run it back for a touchdown for the special teams to get it on the action. Uh, I said John Franklin Miles already. Sheldon Rankins had a sack today. I mean, the Jets' defense was as good as I have ever seen the Jets' defense. Anyway, speaking of if last week was the coming out, this was the after party. Brees Hall was utterly amazing. Again, 116 rushing yards, a touchdown, averaged 5.8 yards per carry. Brees Hall is a monster. An absolute monster right now. I, he looks amazing. The entire Jets running attack looked good. Michael Carter had a few really nice runs. He had uh, 41 yards today. Braxton Barrios had a super nice reverse play for a touchdown for 20 yards. The, the rushing attack looks amazing. And the passing, which I'll get into now, Zach Wilson has not looked good for three weeks. But there is a very good but that I can throw in there, which is he isn't making dazzling plays. But he isn't screwing up. He isn't turning the ball over. He's not making those god-awful decisions where he'd have three interception games. He's not doing that. He's trying to get the ball downfield. I think the play calling for specifically pass plays has been piss poor for the past few weeks for Zach Wilson. But he still has it. It's very clear that he has a great arm. He's got the accuracy still. We just haven't utilized it properly yet. But a really good thing is a lot of times when you're not utilizing that and you lose those games, those games come back to haunt you because, ah, oh, if we had just game planned a little bit earlier, we would have had blank amount of wins and that might have been enough. The Jets have not game planned, I thought, well with Zach Wilson to this point, but he's 3-0 since coming back. And I believe the Jets have averaged about 30 points per game with Zach Wilson at the helm. Which, sure, you can say that that's just a coincidence. This team plays different with Zach Wilson on the field than when they didn't have him. And you cannot tell me otherwise. And the thing is, if the Jets are just a defensive monster with a really, really good running game and a quarterback that can game manage, that's all you need. That's the... That's the recipe for a playoff team. That's the recipe for a team that might not make a Super Bowl run, but that is the recipe for a team that can make the playoffs. That's what the Chiefs, not the Chiefs, that's what the Titans have done for the past few years. Great running game, and I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that Brees Hall is Derrick Henry. I'm not. I'm saying that overall run game with a good defense, that can make you a playoff spot. With a game managing quarterback, I mean, 49ers, anyone? That's all you need for the Jets. And this win was so beautiful because the Cleveland game, everyone made excuses for it. Like, yeah, the Jets won, but, you know, Cleveland more so lost and blew that game than the Jets won that game. And then the Steelers game of, yeah, but it was Kenny Pickett. Yeah, but the Steelers don't have a good offense. So whoopity doo -dah. We kill the Miami Dolphins last week. And yeah, but they don't have Tua, you know, because Tua, noted defensive player who would have stopped Brees Hall from having 200 scrimmage yards. The great defender, Tua Tagovailoa. And I like Tua Tagovailoa. That's not anything disrespecting him. It's just the point of, yeah, they might have been in better, they would have been in a better situation. But the Jets still killed them with the offense. All of the yeah buts that the Jets have been fed and our fans have been fed. And now... With this game, you can't yeah but anything. You can't. The Packers, at home in Green Bay, coming off a loss against the Giants over in the UK. They haven't lost a home game since, I believe it was week 8 of 2020. 
There's nothing to yeah but today, guys. The Jets went into the Packers' house and kicked them up and down a field. They did it. They killed them so badly that Rodgers got benched for the final drive. It was that bad. And it wasn't benching Rodgers because he played awful. Because Rodgers didn't play terribly. But they went, yeah, it's out of reach. Why waste it? The Jets. The Jets. These ones. Blew them out so badly that they figured, yeah, why waste it? Why bother risking Rodgers to get injured? They, the Jets, have made teams, good teams, teams that made deep playoff runs in recent memory, wave the white flag. (laughs) It's so incredible. It's so incredible. It's so strange. Because for years we've been telling ourselves that we're fine, we're going to turn it around. We're going to get better. We're going to eventually come through. And the Jets this season, I thought it after week two. I really started to think it after last week, and this week is just the icing on the cake of it. We are not a good team. With the defense playing the way it is, we are borderline great. And after half a decade of rebuilding, not like starting to, no, a half a decade of hard rebuilding, we have finally come out on the other side of the tunnel and we now see the light. I have the Chiefs Bills game on in the background for a very good reason, which is if the Chiefs can manage to pull this upset off and beat the Bills, the New York Jets, the New York Jets, after six weeks, could be leading the AFC East. And I am. I'm nearly in tears. Like, it was a joke when I made myself fake cry, but I am genuinely beside myself right now. The Jets are good. Really, honest to goodness, good. And we've waited so long to finally get here. So the 3-0 and start on the road. The Jets look to continue and make 4-0 and next week when the Jets travel to Denver to play the Denver Broncos. That game is at 4.05 Eastern. I'll be here afterwards to talk about it. And the Jets could be three games over 500. I do. We could be five and two next week. We're five. We're four and two right now. We could be five and two next week. I can't believe it. But that's all I have to say. So thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you all have an absolutely fantastic day. And as always, go Jets.